from the prophet Habakkuk, the third verse, beginning in the 17th verse. He wrote, even though the fig trees have no blossom, and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails, and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Sovereign Lord is my strength, for he makes me as sure-footed as a deer able to tread upon the heights. And then from the familiar Luke setting of the birth of Christ. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Do not be afraid, he said, for I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. For a Savior, yes, the Messiah, has been born today in Bethlehem. Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? In the quietness of this morning hour, O oh God, we ask you to teach us, inspire us, show us your will. Help us to have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Tis the season to be jolly. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Joy to the world. Lord. There are so many traditional Christmas carols that we know and love that focus on joy. From Thanksgiving to Epiphany, the themes of our worship and the greeting cards that we send or receive, as well as all the music that we listen to or sing, they all focus on love and joy and peace and hope. Certainly, for some of us, the Christmas season is exciting and meaningful and fulfilling and rewarding and joyous. But for others, it's a season of stress and anxiety, depression. For some, surviving is the season is the primary goal. After long years in the pastorate, it become clear to me that every emotion known to the human experience is intensified during the Christmas season. If everything seems to be going well for us, then most likely we're going to have a merry little Christmas. But if things are not going and we're dealing with personal issues, or professional stress, or family dysfunction, or the loss of a loved one, or the floodgates of painful memories have been released, then the prospect of having a holly jolly Christmas is probably bleak. It's almost as though the Christmas angels are still trying to get our attention. We haven't quite gotten the message yet, have we? Remember what the angel said to the shepherds? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because I bring you good news of a great joy. 
You see, friends, the good news of the birth of Christ is supposed to dissipate our fear and bring us joy. Now think of this. The coming of Christ is the seed of joy that is planted in the spiritual center of the follower of Christ. But I tell you, my friends, it takes a lot of work, a lot of work to allow that seed to mature into fruit production that we all, I think, are looking for. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. For you see, the people who meet us and know us and work with us or live next door to us, they probably do not read the Bible. They read you. They read the Christian. Are they reading the joy of the Lord that is evident in you? Now, I will confess to you this morning that this is a particularly difficult topic for me. Because joy is perhaps the fruit of the Spirit that I have probably struggled with the most. I remember it as though it were yesterday. Dr. Bob Williams and I were having lunch together in my office at University Church in East Lansing. Bob was the senior pastor of Plymouth Congregational Church in Lansing. He was 25 years my senior, but he and I had developed a very deep and important friendship. We met for lunch every other week in either his office or mine for 10 years until his death. We could talk with each other about anything, and I still miss him after 20 years. He was my primary mentor in ministry. I admired him as a person as well as a pastor. He was wise. He was knowledgeable. He was insightful. He was loving. He was peace-centered. And he was joy-filled. Over lunch that day, I said to Bob, always seem so full of joy. Even when things are difficult for you, you seem to be able to go with the flow and maintain a positive attitude. How do you do it? I have a hard time being joyful. Can you help me with that? I want to feel joy in my soul. I just don't know how. He began probing. He asked questions, which was consistent with his counseling background. He asked me about my family of origin and how they dealt with difficulties and challenges. He asked me about my temperament. He asked me about my personality measure. He inquired about my spirituality. He gave me some books to read. And over the course of time, a long time, we talked about them extensively. This is the fruit of that learning. Dr. Bob taught me that joy is different from happiness. We tend to use the words as though they are interchangeable, don't we? They are not the same. Happiness is dependent on happenings, he would say. Happiness tends to be a conditional reality based upon what's happening around us or to us or within us. Happiness is often dependent on the behavior of other people or the sequence of events in our lives, or the circumstances in which we find ourselves. 
God taught me that joy is a condition of the heart. It's an inner sense of well-being. Joy is having that sense of calm delight in the face of difficulty. Joy is that quality of the spirit that transcends the events and the disasters that we face almost daily. Joy is that divine dimension that helps us have the buoyancy to get through what we are going through. God also taught me that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It comes from the seed of faith. Because, you see, if by faith we believe that all things work together for good for those who love God, then we can learn to trust God even in the difficult. In our work together, Bob introduced me to the writings of Viktor Frankl. Bob had been selected as the first American to travel, travel to Switzerland and study logotherapy with Dr. Frankl, who was a Jewish psychologist who survived the German death camp during World War II. Based on Dr. Frankl's faith, as well as his experience, he concluded that people cannot control the circumstances of their lives, but they can control how they respond to those circumstances. It's amazingly similar, isn't it, to the message that we read from Habakkuk. When everything is falling apart around us, the prophet said, yet will I rejoice. I will be joyful. God, my Savior. Joy, my friends, is a choice. It's like a spring that wells up deep within us. When my parents lived in south central Missouri, Big Spring National Park was down the river about five miles from their home. The crystal clear waters from that spring bubbled up and flowed out into the spring-fed current river. Geologists estimate that Big Spring produces in excess of 800,000 gallons of water every day. That source of spring water cannot be stopped or kept because the spring bubbles from deep, deep, I believe that joy is like big spring. Joy comes from the well of salvation that bubbles deep within the spiritual center of the follower of Jesus. So this Advent season, my friends, I invite you to find your joy. Find it. And practice it. Even after all these years, I'm still working. I haven't mastered it yet, not by a long shot. But I tell you, joy is more than optimism. Joy is more than the power of positive thinking. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for being with us on this second Sunday of Advent. We are delighted that you have been here and that you have joined us in this time of worship. If you have been readers of the Advent booklet, you have noticed throughout the week that there have been messages about joy. One that certainly struck a chord with me, not because it's my wife, but because she remembered a children's song that she learned in Bible school and probably all of us have sung when we hearken back and think back to Sunday school. I've got the joy, 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 what? Down in my heart. That
that is the challenge as we go into our week. The seed has been planted, but what are you going to do with that seed? Is it going to grow and blossom and mature into joy in your life? May it be ever so.